Welcome to Biz Besties. I'm Jody Kenny. And I'm Miranda Von Fricken. And on this show, we are going to talk about the importance of collaboration in work and in life. And boy, has life changed significantly since we conceptualized this show just several months ago, Miranda. Yeah, it's been crazy. Obviously, I'm locked in a closet right now while <laughs> recording this pre-launch episode. But yeah, life has changed. We conceptualized this what seems like a lifetime ago, but we actually started to really execute on it just a few months ago, pre-recorded some awesome episodes, but I felt it was definitely time to do something a little more specific to what's going on today. Yeah, so we pre-recorded a couple of episodes and then we kind of went about our way. We kind of ebbed and flowed on working together because we had other things going on in our lives. And then the great pause of 2020, you know, COVID-19 has really changed life for everybody. And you know, now we're all in self-isolation. We are on what week four of self-isolation right now. And that has really changed, you know, kind of like what this show was going to be into what it now is going to be. I don't know. I just feel like we have thought about, you know, what we recorded before, all these concepts can still apply to you, but we thought we would record a special pre-launch show. We're recording this the day before uh, the launch of the show because we wanted to take a moment to really talk about the fact that the world has changed and we realize that. And because of that, we are going to respond to it and we're going to, you know, do our best to try to talk about ways to succeed, but also um, understand that, you know, a lot of people are out of a job right now. Um, A lot of people, you know, are missing their biz besties. Yes, they are. It's hard because, I mean, what you mentioned, the way we originally visualized it, I was wearing fabulous shoes in my mind and a beautiful hot pink dress. My yes. hair is flowing, but today I've got, you know, flip-flops and pajamas on from the waist down, and that seems to be the new norm with these Zoom calls and how people are recording and, and doing life together. And although we obviously recorded this these re, these messages a while ago, these podcast shows, um, we were in a different time now. So now we have to honor what it looks like for today, for the audience that we planned on serving from the moment we conceptualized this. You know, we knew we were talking to nine to fivers, small business owners, stay at home moms, you know, solopreneurs. We're talking to all different types of professionals and their lives are totally different now, just like ours are. We are growing businesses separately, but together we're still able to, you know, bring awareness to our mission to get biz besties rolling and moving forward. Yeah. And you know, what's so funny is that I think self-isolation has really kind of brought out um, different personalities in, in us. Um, You know, I am in a position, you know, my job, I'm forward facing, I'm out in the media, I work in media. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that on our launch, launch show. (laughs) This is the pre-launch show. Um, But, you know, in my daily life, I'm a very outgoing person. But what I've noticed over the last month of self-isolation is that I actually like being at home. I'm a homebody. And... um, (laughs) I mean, trust me, I, I still need my job. I love my job and, you know, I, I love what I do to serve people in my job, but I realize that I also can, um, I can self-isolate and I'm, and I'm okay with it. And I know that you were kind of struggling with it. You're, you were like, you and I are like yin and yang when it comes to that. Absolutely. So I normally feed off of the energies of the people around me of being in the spotlight of, of having conversations with the driven professionals. And I, although I'm doing that through a Zoom call, there's something to be said about the actual energy exchange when you're sitting across from a human and not a computer screen. So although I don't work a nine to five right now, I, I'm just my business, which is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> However, so I had been used to working from home, but the stages are no longer there for me to speak on. So there's definitely, um, there was some dark times for me, even with my happy lamp. It can only be so happy in a lamp. Yeah, (laughs) you're right. You know, like I don't live by myself. I have a family and it's great to be home with my daughter. But I went from, you know, a party of one when it came to my business for a second to now being a third grade teacher 
an 11th grade teacher to, you know, being um, a, a worker trying to grow her business, but also my husband's home trying to work his business still too. So it's, uh, it has been quite confusing and crazy. And it, there has been some ups and downs. Absolutely. So I really miss being out with people and I can get a little bit of that through these type of conversations, but it's not the same. Turns out I'm more human than I thought. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I need other humans around me to keep me fueled and energized. And I can't wait to get back to whatever the new normal is going to be moving forward. I count down the, the moments till I can hug somebody. <laughs> I need to be around people. Absolutely. And I found out that I'm a rock and it's okay. <laughs> That we're kind of not opposites, but that we balance each other out. That's what this is all about. We wouldn't be able to do what we do and, and launch this podcast and be the biz besties we are and, and friends that we are if we didn't balance each other out. Right, exactly. So today we didn't want it to just be a pre-launch show saying, hey, we're launching this thing. We also wanted to give you a little bit of meat with it. And uh, we came up with, uh, what did we say that we were going to do? Three ways that so we're coping? Ways that we are thriving through this crisis. Okay, three ways that we are thriving through this crisis. You want to go first? Sure, absolutely. Um, so for myself, like I had mentioned, I am an up and down kind of girl. Even in normal times, I feel all the things, right? So I mean, I really, I feel very much like an empath. And when there's no energy around me, besides the crazy voices in my head, <laughs> yeah. sometimes it gets a little wonky. So I, I like to have structure. And so I've given myself some structure. So the three things that I've made sure that I'm continuously doing so I don't go crazy and drive my husband and, and kids crazy as well um, is I call it the three F's. Um, and no, they're not swear words, although that's totally my style. <laughs> <laughs> the first way that I'm thriving through this situation is by finding something every day, no matter how small to do. Find something. Check some sort of box. For me, I love my to-do lists. I love checking boxes. I know you've got to-do lists that are a mile long too. I need to be able to check those boxes to feel like I've accomplished something. And it doesn't need to be some huge monumental thing like create my online course, right? That's on my to-do list, but it's not, it, it's not necessary for me to feel like I've contributed in some way or I've served the people that I work for or that I'm with. Um, so just find something, comment on posts. If I'm not feeling creative um, enough to kind of do put my own content out there, because sometimes I'm just not feeling it and I don't want to write or I don't have any inspiration, which is kind of rare for me. Instead, comment on other people's who are feeling the inspiration, who are out there. So comment on their posts, text with friends, and just try to find a way to do three things and check those boxes. So that's find something to do. The second one is to focus on the gifts slash opportunity that this season has provided for us. Now that sounds kind of crazy to some, I know because you've lost your job, you're not sure how you're going to pay the bills. You're really struggling with depression. I've heard it, all of it, the good, the bad and ugly from clients that I'm serving in one-on-one -on -one capacities. Um, but there's always something positive to focus on. By the end of my conversations with them, I'm teaching them that the, the, the focus on either your family's personal health, the fact that you still have a roof over your head, that you've got groceries in the refrigerator, or that you've got the resources to obtain those. You may not have a job, but you have the resources and skills to get a job. You, nobody can take away that education. Nobody can take away your skill sets or how you contribute. This is just a season. Let's focus on the positive personally and professionally. And the third thing is fuel. So we're going to fuel ourselves, our mind, our body, and our spirit every day. I know that sounds like a lot, but little things to fuel my mind, talking to you, talk to a friend, have a nice conversation, um, fueling myself by writing or reading, listening to a podcast, wink, wink, <laughs> <laughs> fueling your body by moving it every day, going for walks. I taught my kid how to ride a bike the other day. So now I run besides her on the cul-de-sac. So while she's riding her bike, move your body, drink water, fuel it properly. You know, it's going to be harder to stay a hundred percent on your clean eating plan that maybe you wanted to before because your, your bulk 
snacking. <laughs> You're buying yeah. everything in bulk, so the snacks are right there and readily available. Um, but just recently, I said enough's enough because I got on like a snack tangent. I became like a snack monster, and I said no more. So fueling my body is just as important as fueling my mind and my spirit. And that spirit is fueling it through my morning mindset routine, praying, self-care, making sure I shave my legs, I put a bra on at least twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the thing. Like today, we are talking on Zoom and recording this. I put on some perfume because I want to smell good. Y'all can't smell me, but I can. So it makes me feel good. So that's a form of self-care for me. So the three ways I'm thriving through is finding something to do every day, focusing on the positive and fueling myself. I love it. I love it. I, I understand the whole snack thing. You know, I'm really, I'm really good with my diet. I, I don't snack a lot, but last night it was midnight. I was dealing with insomnia. Mm. And I was like, maybe I could just get a little snack. I went down and I grabbed this popcorn in a bag. It was like kettle corn popcorn, a whole chip bag, not just like a little snack, snack size, the whole bag. And I just went up to my bed and I ate like three quarters of it. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I justified it because it was, know you're doing it. no, I justified it because it was a skinny pop, but mm. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> still I ate three quarters of the bag. Here you get, that's what that means, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the three ways that I'm thriving through that I would like to share with people is plan, power, and perform. I went with three P's. Yeah. And um, so my first one, plan. Planning for me is like a, a, the golden ticket. It really is. I, and I'll tell you, the first week that I was on self-isolation, I didn't plan anything. I sat on my butt, I watched Netflix, I, you know, really just kind of chilled and the house was a mess. I had nothing going on. The second week, a couple days a week, I put, just scratched down what I wanted to do for, you know, to get done. And I got those done, but really had no progress whatsoever. The third week I woke up and it was like I was a new person. I was like, you know what? What makes me happy is achieving my goals, small, manageable, smart goals and getting them done. And so I decided to go back to my way of planning. And my plan is simple. I put a.m., day, and p.m. And so in the morning, I make a couple easy achievable goals, goals that I know that I'm going to do no matter what. So like this morning, it was stretch, make my bed, shower, and drink a glass of water. Nice. And those are things that I do every morning anyways. But having them down on a piece of paper and being able to go check, 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 it set my mind in a position where I know I'm going to be successful. Yep. Then for day, that's where you kind of have the most energy. You fueled yourself with some good food, some coffee, and you're ready to get going. So that's when I kind of put the meat of what I want to get done. So for today, I said that I wanted to list an American Girl doll that I have for sale. I'm going to put her up on, on uh, and she's going to find a home. Uh, I wanted to record with you. I want to edit this podcast. I'm going to list five other small items on Facebook Marketplace because I cleaned my scrapbooking room and I have all these scrapbooking supplies that I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to use. <laughs> so I'm going to sell them and I'm going to sell them cheap. So, you know, people want to be busy right now. People have children that are at home. They're cooped up. They're looking for things to do. So I'm going to list those. And then I'm going to help uh, Trinity with, uh, oh, Trinity's teacher is doing a fundraiser. And so I'm going to make sure that we donate to her fundraiser. Like real simple goals that I thought to myself that I could achieve. And as I go down the list, I'm going to check them off. Now, I'm a little bit forgiving with myself on the day goals because when you plan some day goals, sometimes you can get derailed. So I may not be able to list five items today, but if I list two or three items, I'll call that a win. Um, and then in the PM, I make it really easy. Wash my face, brush my teeth. You know, well, you like, know you're going to win that one. <laughs> I'm going to do it. It's what yeah. I'm going to do. But having a plan. And then also at the end of the day, I also say write goals for tomorrow. So it really just takes less than five minutes to plan yourself. My voice is so not used to talking. Do you hear it going up and down? Yep. yep I feel that's like another, we have to talk about it. And we're talking people and we don't, we haven't been talking for the last month, but, um, so in the evening, 
spend less than five minutes planning your next day. Set yourself up so that way you don't have to wake up and think about what you want to do. So that's plan. Power. This is really important. You need to think about what your secret sauce is, what your superpower is. My superpower is making sure that life is in order and helping people accomplish their goals. Like I, I just really, I can easily look at somebody when they're struggling and I can help them work through their problems. And I just feel a real sense of um, satisfaction doing that. So my superpower is helping others stay organized and organizing myself. So that's why the list is so important. I don't perform well if I don't have a list. So I have, you know, I worked to help others have their power. And so I've actually done that with my children. We actually had a meeting with my son last night because he's been willy nilly all over the place. You know, he just like, uh, I think I got this class. Uh, I think I get this class and he's getting ready to go to college and I'm really nervous for him. So I sat him down yesterday and I was like, this is in no means um, a lecture. This is just to help you help yourself. Don't you know, he was up, showered and at his desk before I even got out of bed this morning. Wow. Simply because I helped him plan a, his success strategy. I so, think they miss that structure, right? They get that in school yes. every day. But now that we're their teachers and we were, I wasn't made to be a child teacher. Like I actually, I'm a college teacher. Like I yeah. teach for adult learners, but I'm, I'm definitely, I wasn't made to be a third grade teacher. It just no. wasn't. You know, so they, they're just, they have their special gifts and we need that back. <laughs> we really do. I, you know, I, I did, okay. I wrote a blog post about thanking teachers very much. So, you know, even in the first week of just review, I was like, <laughs> holy cow, this is hard. I knew it was hard all the time. I, I, you know, I bowed down to teachers, but you know, my son being 17, I kind of was just letting him do his thing. Cause I figured, Oh, he's going to college in a couple months, but no, you know what? He still needs the support and structure. Absolutely. And and it's my job to help him organize his thoughts in his plan of action. And, it, and he's being so successful with it. So I helped him find his power. And I know what my power is. So if you identify what your power is and play to your strengths, you'll be much more successful in achieving your goals. And then finally, perform. You know, once you got a plan in place, once you know what your superpower is, you got to perform. You have to have the get up and go to do it. So don't set goals that are not realistic for yourself, like clean the whole house. <laughs> that is an unrealistic goal. Let's, let's agree upon that. Unless we have a cleaning crew come in. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> and, then, and then you could say, clean the house and just sit back and drink your wine or your coffee or whatever. So really performance is key. And, you know, right now you may not feel like you want to perform. You know, I know some people who are dealing with some serious depression and stress and, yeah. and anxiety because they've either lost their jobs or their businesses are closed right now under mandatory closure, you know, be kind to yourself, but perform something, whether that is just a walk around your neighborhood, whether that's some deep breathing, whether that's get, downloading a meditation app and, down, and meditating for five minutes, perform something that's going to make you feel good. So, you know, I think you and I are on the same plane when it comes to the, the final item that we want to share with people. It's about fueling yourself and it's about performing yep. for yourself. Absolutely. to make yourself feel good. And I think I finally gotten my groove in week four. Like, I'm just like, I'm banging it out. I, I clean my <laughs> scrapbooking room. Do you know I spent nine hours one day oh my cleaning my scrapbooking room and I got about 85% of it done. Nice. That's how I feel about my garage and basement. We just <sighs> rented a giant dumpster and tossed everything because we have a lot of construction debris down there from redoing our whole first floor when you say don't tackle a huge project i that's me actually my husband but i i support his crazy so i say <laughs> yeah let's let's tear down every wall in the downstairs all at once let's do all it once, let's do it <laughs> and then you go what are we doing <laughs> yeah now a year later i'm like let's get rid of that junk that we tossed in the basement <laughs> so yeah this be time like i mean i you and i are very high performing woman anyway so I think for us our first thought is you know if we're not doing something that's moving the needle forward 
we feel really down on ourselves. Yeah. And that's, that's what I seem to be struggling with a little bit, but also hearing from people I work with and people, women I coach that they're feeling the same way. Cause I think you and I both work with high performers. So we all seem to have this mentality um, that if we're not doing something, then we're slacking. Mm-hmm. But I had a really cool call with one of my clients, how she doesn't want to do anything. She actually said, I'm using this time because I've worked 80 hours a week for the last two years. I'm, I'm no longer telling myself to do anything. I'm sleeping in. I'll brush my teeth, of course, but I'm not brushing my hair. (laughs) She's Mm -hmm. like, I'm doing absolutely nothing unless I feel like it, which is awesome. But she's refueling her entire soul and spirit and, and physically probably too. So when this does get back to normal, because we will leave our house someday Mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be sooner than we thought it is going to, we are going to go back to working these crazy hours and just thriving and, and excelling and hitting goals and being high achieving again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing nothing during this time. So when you were in week one and two and kind of chilling, and that was actually on the opposite where the first couple of weeks I was like, whoa, I'm doing all the things like I can't wait to change the world in the next five minutes where I started to lose the energy and now I'm a little more like forgiving of myself and giving myself grace and relaxing because I feel like it's it's actually gonna get back to the crazy again and I, I don't know if I'll have this time to to shut down and be with my whole family all at once for days at a time you know so yeah it's, uh, it's pretty cool The one thing too that I find women are having a hard time with um, is the self-care piece because, you know, we can't get our hair done. We can't get our nails done. You know, our eyelashes and eyebrows are looking crazy these days, you know, (laughs) so I feel like we are struggling, but I mean, I took a shower today and shaved my legs and it felt amazing. And Mm -hmm. it was like, Hmm, I can give myself a pedicure. I could do my own nails. And although I can't give myself highlights, it is, they are looking good still. <laughs> I feel like there are. You look really good today. <laughs> <laughs> there are things we can do. And with a little one at home, I, I get how hard it is. And honestly, we don't have as many doors in this house as I, I feel I need. <laughs> we don't have a lot of doors. So I can't close these people out and, and get some me time, but I do have a bedroom and I can block time out just like I would when I'm working in my business. Time blocking isn't just for business people. It's for you too. So I think what I'll start doing is, you know, either getting up early, which is the funny thing is now my kid gets up earlier than she did when she was in school. Cause she's oh, my Lord. So my morning me time is she's like, mom, I need help with fractions. And I'm like, no, this is my me time girl. So I think I'll have to start time blocking in the afternoon of when it's just mommy time. Dad's going to help you with everything. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cook tonight and I'm going to go do some me time. I've been doing obviously girl nights, drinking wine by the zoom fire, (laughs) but I think (laughs) I still, I, as much as I love being around people, I can also feel by being alone. And I haven't had a lot of alone time, which sounds crazy. Like I'm not complaining being with my family, but I need some me time. I like myself. I want to hang out with her. <laughs> so, yeah, and you know, it's important to note, Miranda, just like you, I think what you're getting to is that it's okay to do nothing and that it's still moving forward. Yes, absolutely. And, and saying it's okay to still put myself first, mm-hmm. even though the responsibilities have been heightened with the kids being home and everybody being here um, and wiping down all the groceries and stuff like life may have changed, but our priorities don't really have to. Right. We can still put ourselves first. We can still time block, get some stuff done and still move forward, even if it's one step at a time and a little slower than we thought the turtle still gets to the finish line, even though he's not sprinting, he still gets there. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we really want you to know that we're here for you. We're here to um, understand your pain points because we're going through it as well. Um, In real time, the next couple of episodes have been pre-recorded. So we want to let you know that, but you're more than welcome to um, binge listen because we do have a couple episodes up already. So for those of you who have stuck through to the end of this recording or getting a little (laughs) teaser, the rest of you are going to be like, oh, there's a new episode up in a couple weeks. Promote it. Our goal is to do this every two weeks. And um, this besties, man. I know. I'm so excited. excited. Finally launch this. We we may not be launching the way we thought we were going to, but it really doesn't matter because in the end, 
the mission was still to help people and I think they need us more than ever. So I think I'm still just as excited, just as pumped to present this to everyone on the time frame we wanted to. Um, this pre-episode obviously is just to give you guys a heads up of what's going on, let you know we're real, we're here. Um, but what you're gonna hear in the next episode is just a little more about Jody and I, why we became his besties, how it happened, and uh, what it's gonna look like going forward. So we yes. hope you enjoy all of it. And please also connect with us on social media. We started social media accounts for Miss Besties, which we haven't been promoting on, but we're going to start because obviously we need to, time. we need to do it. It's time. Yeah. So, but you can, <laughs> you can connect with us, uh, Biz Besties on pretty much every platform and mm-hmm. also on our solo sites as well. Jody Kenny for me, Miranda Von Fricken or Mastermind Coach Miranda for me. So connect with us and we would love for you to grab your favorite beverage, Biz Bestie, and press play on the next episode. Woohoo! Enjoy! Yeah!